And, yeah, just uh, called low skill, Ricky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's like, it, like they all know each other so well. They've played so many games, so many tournaments against each other. Uh, they just prioritize, you know, making sure that they don't get their comfort picks, the strategies that they're most comfortable with. So it's That's pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah, sure. What do you say, buddy? All right, Sammy, talk to us about this undying. What 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 is this undying for? Yeah, I mean the undying. I mean, it looks like it's just five undying. Looks like it's gonna be four clockwork, and then the TA. So looks like it's gonna be double melee versus TA inch. So not the easiest lane. Meanwhile, the undying is just gonna maybe pair with the Lena in the safe lane. Um, I guess the undying could theoretically go four, but I don't think that's a great option in this game. Um, it looks like they just want team fight. It looks like they need more ways to protect their Lena. So they want to be able to just put this tombstone down. Um, Beast Coast don't really have a great way of dealing with tomb. Uh, the summons aren't good at hitting tomb really. And um, you know, I guess it, now that with the, with the TA, they have two range right clickers, but Tiny's obviously not good at killing it. And Enchantress is um, kind of mediocre, but I'm not, I'm not so sure. I'm not really sold on the Undying. I wish they would have got a little more lockdown, it looks like. Um, you know, they have Timber Saw, which is going to do tons of damage. They have LSA, they have Clockwork, but they don't really have any hard lockdown right now. Yeah, I I, there's a lot of issues that I have with this. Like, BKBs counter up the majority of this team super hard. At this point, like, you just kill Lina and you have BKBs. Like, you BKB go on Lina, then you win the team fight right now. So yeah. your last hero is going to have to solve that problem. As I'll like you mentioned, a, a severe lack of lockdown. You basically just have Clockwork. Lina... Because of how people do for skill build now, where they only put one point of life strike array, the lockdown feels kind of underwhelming, especially without a setup. The other thing too yeah. is like you gave Parker one of his most comfortable heroes, right? Like this yeah, is so this is safe lane TA Parker. This is like what he was like jumping into the scene for. This is what got him a lot of success over the last like couple of years. Uh, which means we're gonna be seeing the offlane NP, and offlane NP does well into the Lena. It's like not a bad matchup yeah, in the does. offlane. So this is you know, decent lanes from both side lanes for the side of Beast Coast, and they have last pick for the mid matchup. So they're looking pretty strong on the draft. Yeah, definitely. There is some uh, cheeky play you can do with Lina and the safe thing versus Furion. You can like, because most Lina's actually go like 0-1-2. Right. You can go like 1-1-1, uh, one, one, or you can go one zero two 2 actually, and just uh, focus on using the slave to clear out the uh, Furion summons. Mm -hmm. But definitely a good lane for Furion, one of the lanes that actually gets out pretty freely lena will obviously have some kill potential but also you know that you know maybe he'll get tossed um have kill potential the other way i think if the lane was clock lena they would have pretty strong kill potential but if the lane ends up being lena undying it's a very passive lane so um it'll be interesting to see what they do i mean i, I honestly prefer they lane the clock with the lena but to maybe put down a bit more aggressive lane actually get some kill potential on the furion and maybe you can just send the undying to drag waves for the timber saw Something like that kind of neutralize the Enchantress TA that way. Doesn't um, Undying become really useless pretty fast, though, at that point? Like, he's yeah, going to be very underleveled. Yeah, he does, but it looks like he'll be underleveled either way. Yeah, I could be wrong. <laughs> maybe, he'll, maybe he'll end up fine in the safe lane. He'll just play against the Tiny and the Furion. Because it's, it's not a poor lane, I guess. I mean, he'll be able to body for the Lina, but it just looks like a lane where they're not going to be able to pressure. They're just going to farm. The Furion will farm. Tiny will maybe drag a wave. Maybe he'll roam mid. Maybe he'll stun the mid lane something like that, and um, I think that favors Beast Coast. I think um, the Enchantress is looking to get out of the top lane pretty early. You know, they're going to try to get Parker uh, early level 6. He's going to start trapping up the area where the Timber Saw is. The Enchantress is maybe going to try to pressure the Timber Saw, then he's going to move to mid, then he's going to move and take the Lina's jungle. Because really, this Lina hero accelerates between, you know, 8 and 12 minutes. It's like the old Luna used to accelerate where you really want to farm your big jungle. So Enchantress is going to go straight to that big jungle and make sure that Lina doesn't get any space. And uh, now it's picking up a lockdown hero to actually protect their big jungle. Storm being one of the best heroes to protect your jungle. It's going to want to farm there, going to want to spam remnants, and it's going to have a lot of catch and a lot of burst to make sure that this Enchantress can't walk into this jungle alone. I think that's a really good pick for now there. Can this be punished though? Because there's a lot of like hard storm counters. Well, Oh no! <laughs> There's one of them. Um, you son of a bitch! Ricky. I was like, I'm pretty sure it's like you just pick a four Skywrath, and now it's a tiny mid, of course, which is a Dark Mago classic. So yeah, um, exactly. it's not bad into the Storm Spirit lane. Like it, you can deal with it, and I would say it's even favored into Storm. I think Tiny is counterpick Storm generally. Yeah, I was gonna say because like mid lane, like... 
you like Dark Mega had so many heroes he could still pull from, right? He doesn't. He's not a huge SF player, and like he could have gone for like an SF, but then you like severely lack that initiation. But now yeah. you have a sick silence coming out from Skyrath this game, and Dark Mega on one of his absolute best heroes. I will say, I think these guys need to get to the Spearin Ags pretty fast because they only have one stun, and they also only have. Like, they have no lockdown. None of their heroes have lockdown, except Tiny. So, mm -hmm. if uh, Nouns can shut down this Tiny, like, actually bring their supports mid, like, this is a situation where I would actually maybe even... You can sacrifice your side lanes in this game, because if you shut down this Tiny, you don't let this guy get off to a good start. His phase boots, his wind lace, his blink. Um, you can really take it full of this game, because Beast Coast are really limited on the stun, stun aspect, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely worrisome for them. But, you know... They're also very used to playing like this. They really want to play through Dark Mago. They want to get this guy off to a good start. They're going to make stacks for him. They're probably going to give this guy like a stack of four or five large camp and uh, try to you know get this guy a really early blink. And then once he has a blink, you're going to see Schofield, Dark Mago, Stinger running around the map while Parker farms everything. And Sacred maybe picks up that Ags. And then they're going to start really you know being able to play everywhere. Yeah, you got three of these heroes moving around together. You have a ton of kill potential between the Skyrath and the Tiny alone. Uh, without the Enchantress, Nature's Prophet's going to be shoving lanes, then Templar Assassin, Parker here, just going to be farming while all this goes on. Uh, it's going to be difficult to shut down unless, like you mentioned, you just ruin Tiny's game. I think everything falls apart if you get this Tiny. So, let's, uh, let's hop into this one. I I probably favor Nouns. I mean, it's it's nothing personal. It's not like I'm a yeah, biased caster for this one or anything like that. Clearly. Uh, but, you know... Uh, the team is incredibly good. I hear their manager is very handsome. I've heard that as well, actually, yeah. from multiple sources. All right. Well, we'll see if uh, Nouns can pull it out. Sammy, what do you think? Team draft-wise, which one are you leaning towards? Uh, I mean, to me, this Undying looks out of place. Something about the Undying seems wrong to me. So I'm going to say Beast Coast. Um, that said, I mean, they are missing Hector. I would say, I mean, as good as Parker is, I would say it's a pretty significant like change or maybe you know downgrade compared to Hector K1. So I wouldn't be surprised if he announced pull out a victory, but I do think Beast Coast draft is a little better. Oh, he's gonna yeah. walk right up onto the high ground, maybe. Lelis can't really get in. Nice job, nice dodger by Singer. I mean, I kind of, I kind of agree with you. I think if this is the full Beast Coast lineup, I would be like very heavily in favor of Beast Coast this game, but. Uh, Without him, it's a little bit iffy. That being said, Parker is on his very best hero, so I'm gonna go with Beast Coast here. I honestly think Schofield is about to just absolutely destroy Nouns in the mid game. I really think this Skyth Mage is gonna be a huge problem. Yeah, definitely. Really good game for Skyth Mage. Like you have Kill Threat on the Timber Saw and Storm now. Like Avatos kills Timber Saw. I'm even worried about the top lane. I mean, the, this Undying is going to get concussive into the Furion, and I mean, he's going to lose a lot of HP, although already there's kind of a tri lane coming out. They're going to try to go for Sacred. This is sick if they can stay on top of the NP. I mean, they've got a lot of damage between these two. He's just oh, can't get the, yeah. the tree that's on top of him. He's trying to body block off Yamsun, but Lelis will grab the first blood. So good start for the side of Nounce. Yeah, really important for Lelis now. I and mean, you look what he bought. He bought. Two mangoes, uh, tango, sal. He got to buy like, you know, two hundred fifty gold worth of regen right there, which is really gonna help uh, this. Parker uh, might have just DC'd bottom. Oh, oh no. Uh oh. Uh -oh. I literally look bottom. And he's like running through the trees. Okay. And I'm like, that's oh, not gosh. wrong. And Lelis pauses the game first. Actually, he's like, something's not right. Good what a good guy. guy. What an actual good guy. They were just like, uh, they. Yeah. 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 Now it's the best team. They ended up giving up. Uh... Five minutes of pause time yesterday as well. I don't know if you guys were watching that one. I wasn't. Yeah. Uh, I hear that was the manager's call, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> DX goes as Parker. Oh, no. Uh, Parker's in a bit of trouble here, unfortunately. There is a battery assault going on him. I believe he's dead. I'm pretty sure here. Yeah, um, I don't think Lelo's a nice guy, but I don't think he paused until he knew that this guy was just dead no matter what. Yeah, yeah. he paused. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely like saw him activate the battery salt and then he paused as soon as yeah. Parker stood still. He's like, wait a minute. Yeah, he has right, to go Parker a fraction. Here, a fraction. But... Oh, wait, let's let's get too far away. Yeah. yeah. Refraction gets him out. 
Okay. I will say it forces the slow on Stinger, and this is not the spell Enchantress wants in this lane. I mean, we'll see it right away. You know, Enchantress, if he had Impetus here, he's even built for it. He has triple Mango, right? He has uh, Mantle of Intelligence, making him a little mm -hmm. smarter. Um, but unfortunately, skilling Enchant level 1 is actually pretty disastrous towards actually winning this lane. So, yeah. really unfortunate for them. Mm -hmm. Lull is going to do what all uh, the LA position 4s do and pull the creep wave behind the tower just because you can't trade with your opponents. Take notes, everyone. Want to play like fun pause 4s like Earth Spirit and Clockwork? This is what you do. Super yeah. fun. I guess we can talk about mid lane. So Gunner, Storm Spirit versus Dark Magos, Tiny. And you were talking about this earlier. You feel like Tiny's actually a stronger pick in this lane, right? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's very slightly favored, probably like 55. Um... Like 45, something like that, or maybe 60, 40. Probably 55, 45. Okay. Yeah, I guess once you have, like, the extra points in the Avalanche and the Toss, like, Storm Spirit can, like, very easily get brought down under that combo with, like, any plus one. Yeah, the three is also really good for denying the um, early game. You know, you see it already, Dark Mago, three denies compared to the Storm having zero. And that's kind of the difference, I would say, in this lane. Is the Storm will get a lot of the CS, but Tiny's going to get a lot of the CS, plus a couple denies. Yeah, so. which... Oh my goodness. Denied! But, yeah, Gunner just gets his bottle delivered here, so he's going to be playing around that regen. Uh, Dark Mago has his own, and no one really rotating for the level or for the two minute water runes, so they'll both pick one up. But so yep. far, CS wise, Noun's doing pretty decent. The bottom lane, though, kind of a result of, like you said, Stinger not being allowed to put that point into Epitus early. Yep. He does have a Ghost Creep, which is a pretty lucky spawn for him. But I mean, as you, I mean, it's just tickling the Timber Saw. It's taking basically no damage. Yeah. So, um, pretty unfortunate. Insert plus yeah, one armor meme. Well, meanwhile, though, Husky gonna go down. Ooh, yeah, he's taking a lot of damage. Great body blocks there out from Sacred, and there it is. Grabs another one. This time, going the way of uh, the NP. Nice start here. I mean, uh, you mentioned this lane up here. Sammy, I mean, is just kind of passive. The Undying and the Lina uh, don't have a ton of kill potential together, unfortunately. Like, you yeah. can trade, but against the harass from a Skyrath mage in lane, like, you ain't winning that, man. Yeah, you don't win it. And if you tomb, I mean, they're double range. They're going to hit the tomb right away. You Then you're going to need your W to, you know, keep the tomb alive. And at that point, you're not going to win the trades. So, um, I think it is just a very passive lane for them. The Lina will obviously farm, though. Like, it's very easy for the Lina to just keep farming the lane, especially with how the first flood went. Um, they were able to get a pretty free, you know, early wave. Um, so... Should be good for him still. He'll get farmed, and then really it's on the Enchantress, I think. You know, the Lina is going to rotate to the jungle really early. It's about the Enchantress looking to make the moves to get there. Mid lane? Oh my gosh, Gunner. Yeah, yeah. almost finding the kill there. Nice play All with right. the uh, stick and the fairy fire, though. Yeah. Uh, Scofield's going to maybe make... Yeah, gets that bounty, so no bounty for the Storm Spirit, unfortunately. Yeah. Got to force to move away. That uh, Observer Ward putting in work. Now he's just going to camp the mid lane beside him. You're gonna realize what this guy's up to, though. In fact, yeah, Tiny will keep be it over. I mean, you, uh, yeah, having Lelis here behind them is actually not uh, bad, but I don't I mean, think he's gonna be able to close uh, the gap. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. So, so, it looks like this guy is gonna deny this top room, too. So, pretty bad for just Storm Spirit it. here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've got that so is much movement rough. speed. 325. So it, honestly, what, what what do you do here to help Gunner out in this lane? Do you walk back to base and then TP mid to refill his bottle? Yeah, he's gonna, I mean, he's dying, gonna walk. dying is good. Oh yeah, he's gonna walk. But ideally, if a support can die and just TP fill mid, it'd be good. But it doesn't look like that's possible. So I think walking base for Gunner is the best call. And it definitely sucks. It's definitely like doesn't feel good to do. He has 285 move speed. It's gonna put him really behind a tiny. And you see it already, tiny pulling away. And like this is in the you know pregame, we're talking about how it's really important they shut down this tiny. And so. This is already a great start for Beast Coast, um, yeah. I would say. Schofield is such a bully, man. Look at him. He's just camping. He's waiting for the Storm Spirit to show himself. He doesn't know where he is. Yeah, he's like, yeah, if he's in the jungle, he comes back to the lane, oh, he he's dies to me. So if, well, we, too. If, you, if you see Schofield's build, he also has the Ancient Seal level 2. So, I mean, if he gets this Ancient Seal on an Avatos, there's a likelihood the Storm is just dead. Yep. I mean, it does a lot of burst damage. And we might even see the Skyrath max the Ancient Seal. I've seen that a couple times where they don't skill their Q. They just max Concussive and Ancient Seal. And he'll just play with the Tiny and basically amp the Tiny combo. I saw a 0 2 yeah. 4 build not that long ago from Skyrath. Yep. And yeah, I've seen that one. He went back and this. got a single point in Arcane Bolt later. Uh, and like left concussive i think at two or three but yeah it was it max ancient seal is what i've seen actually fairly commonly out of and the support man gunner 
He's, he's getting the treatment senses. here. Uh, he's getting the treatment, but he's got gamer senses. He's like, he knows where this guy's going, where he's looking at him for him for. Thanger's he's gonna getting, have a hellbear creep as well. Yeah, he's getting his ass handed to him though. He's like a full, oh my god, he's like a level and a half, two levels down on this tiny now. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's in a rough spot. Yeah. He just can't be here anymore. He's got yep. this like camp inside the jungle. At the very Ooh. least, it gives us a chance to to get a faster level six. Yeah. You potentially find yourself something with a hook shot. Your setup is super important. And... Yeah, and the timber saw also getting a lot. Yeah. With three points yeah. in reactive armor. I mean, oh, yes. these points in reactive armor aren't going to help you against the magical burst. Like you mentioned, he's just going to max out the ancient seal in this game. Would not be surprised to see him put the third point into it. It's so yeah. good against Storm Spirit, like the massive cast range, the fact it's got no travel time, super low cast point. It is like one of the best counters in the game to him. Yeah, and Schofield Stinger, I mean, they're Ooh. crossing, so... Come on. I mean, I think they're gonna it alone, Gunner, man. Looks like he's gonna have to walk base again, and he's gonna have to buy a TP, because he doesn't have one if he walks base. In this oh, economy, no, he's, having he's to buy it. your own TP? But they, they see him, they Stinger see him sees now. him. He's yeah. gonna... I mean... He's just gonna enchant the creep and clap <laughs> yeah, him, Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh... He's gonna block it, maybe? Uh, they no, saw Stinger. They can see Stinger underneath Husky's ward, though. Yeah, like, they, know yeah, they see him now. I mean, Storm's too. walking away, though. I mean, going to the other... He's gonna get the D ward now. He knows. He's like, there's no way he would've walked that way. So... Yeah, there we go, D ward. Dude, this is just a game oh. of vision that is just and now, totally Gunner punishing Pat, Gunner. He's kicking Gunner out again. He's walking away. Leave him alone. Let the man farm. <laughs> Come <laughs> on. <laughs> Yeah, so both teams know that that jungle is now warded. Like, both Gunner and Dark Mago ping it out. They're like, all right, something's going oh, on mid lane. Here. Nice Cogs reaction there. Oh my gosh, yeah. the Wrath of Nature as well. But this is going to be TPN from the NP, and they could look to pressure the tower. Uh, as well as underneath the tower, they will eventually find that kill. Husky drops the tombstone, oh, but that's going to be tombstone. quickly picked up. And he's gonna get picked off by the tiny, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. Avalanche and the tree toss. Dude, so much damage coming through from the tiny. That early DD Man. rune. And this is what this is what I was talking about too. Not only is Dark Mago about to pick up another rune, but he has phase boots, he has wind lace online at eight minutes. Now he's gonna start rushing his blink. And this is where even if he's their only stun, he's gonna have massive impact. This is what he loves to do. He loves to buy these phase boots, he loves to buy wind lace, and he's just gonna walk around the map and he's gonna phase boots, walk in, press avalanche, and whoever's in front of him is gonna lose, you know. 800 HP every single time. And they're gonna try to do that all over the map to everyone they see. So, uh, really good from Beast Ghost here off to a great start in this game. Yeah, and then see it, mid -tower. early mid tower. Yeah, mid tower is gone and Sacred, I mean, he's on the way to the Axe. He's the highest yeah. net worth in the game right now on the offlane NP, only level six, of course, cause he, you know, he shares the lane in the offlane, but that Axe is gonna be coming out probably around that like 13, 14 minute mark. Yeah. yeah. The only thing Nouns has going for them right now is this lean is pretty far, but uh, again, Gunnar is super far behind. He's just level 5 right now. It's they bullied him so five. hard. That's they chased him around the map with two heroes, man. And I will say that I think I think the Lina being farmed is pretty natural in this game. I think the big thing for me is that the Timber Saw does have levels in this game. I think, I mean, there's a there's a world where this Enchantress doesn't, you know, Parker doesn't disconnect level one Enchantress skills and Pettis. I mean, you see already uh, Enchantress has two points in his Q. This Timber Saw could have been under massive pressure. So I think that's really good for the side of Nouns. Timber Saw is having a pretty solid game. And oh, meanwhile, though, mid yeah. and top. Uh, that was a nice pick off top lane. They just go for the dive there. Just make sure that they get this tower as well. And uh, at mid lane, still just chasing Gunner. Dark Mago has no intentions of stopping anytime soon. <laughs> oh, he's I mean, got the working. Alpha Wolf too, so he hits like a truck right now. Yeah, I mean, this is incredibly effective what they're doing. And I I'm not sure what Nouns are able to do until Lelis gets his level six. Like that, and maybe Gunner getting one more item. Will, will Gunner take the tome? Do you think he should take 100%, the tome? 100% he should take the tome. No, I think you should give it to the clockwork right now. Yeah, clock needs it. I mean, it looks like there's, I mean, Undying really seems out of place. What does Undying do in this game? No tome, level four? I mean. Well, I mean, we knew this would happen when we saw the Undying picked up. He just had no place to go. Yeah, I mean, but it's like, I mean, it is their counter pick. It's just a very unusual situation to be in, unfortunately. Ooh, able to snipe the DD rune there from Dark Mago. That is pretty nice. Yeah, Another one really of those important. could have <laughs> landed a few more kills. I um, think we're going to see Dark Mago just look to finish his Blink Dagger, though, and you see Stinger drag him a wave here. Um, yeah, and that, this will about have it, and then we'll see a smoke up from Beast Coast. 25 gold off. That's so fast. Yeah. 
Well, I was sitting in the trees beside Gunner right now, realizing that he needs to. He needs to be doing this if Gunner is going to farm at all. Otherwise, Gunner has to play incredibly cautious. I mean, you're zero deaths so far in the Storm Spirit, but at this point, you might as well have taken a couple deaths with how much they've zoned you from the lane. That's the exact Skyrath Mage build we were talking about as well. Three points, Ancient yeah. Seal already. Grab oh, the Mystic yeah. Flare. That's all he needs. Yeah. Like Ancient Seal in the Mystic Flare on top of any Avatos will kill every hero in the game right now, including the Timber Saw until he gets that Hood of Defiance. So yeah, absolutely. he needs that like ASAP because he, like you were saying earlier, he's got levels. But if you could slow down this Timber, you don't really have a space maker anymore. And I feel like mm. that's a huge problem for Nouns. That said, now do have some big pickups. They did put the Tome on the Storm. So Storm is going to be level 8 after this Tome, it looks like, almost. And uh, Clockwork is level 6. So this is where, if they're going to make a move, you know, now's the time. But that said, I mean, Dark Bagger has Blink. Blink is on the way. So Beast Coast also going to be making a move of their own. Um, yeah, it's hiding right the trees now. right now. Yeah, Schofield has smokes queued up. Yeah. Uh, walk around, smoke. There we go. And now oh. Gunner in trouble. No, they see him too. No, no, no. He just oh. goes in and breaks oh. the smoke and TP's out. All right. Oh. Really good play from Gunner. All right, yeah. that's the blink reveal that uh, showed off. But yeah, he just kept going through them. He tried to throw it down the avalanche thinking that he would like stop there. But Gunner yeah. just kept going. He was done. I'm out of here, man. Ooh, Dude, he yoinks the... Uh... Arcane Rune, oh, but he's there. stuck inside the cogs. The hook shot is there. This is a massive kill if they can bring down the tiny. Lelis will be able to help secure it, and he's going to fall here in just a moment. But Mu, the damage from the Timber Saw, he's doing it. A nice tombstone out. They get the slow from the Flesh Golem, and Gunner's going to rejoin the fray. They grab themselves too. What a turnaround just off the smoke break. All yeah, set these up guys there for Gunner. Are pretty good, I have to say. Uh, Sammy, why don't you break down that fight for you know, everyone who <laughs> doesn't understand what just happened, though? I mean,. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it started off really good with the Gunner Spoke Break, but then uh, Tiny commits himself on the rune, gets cogged. I mean, that's, like I said, the really big weakness of this Beast Coast draft. If this Tiny is caught, and he's not going to be able to cycle his spells over and over, Beast Coast aren't going to be able to win the fight. And they do have great ways of getting on top of him. They have Clockwork, they have Timber Saw, they have Undying Slows. So it's really difficult for this Tiny to actually exit the fight. This is where I think Beast Coast really need to pick up a Force Staff, or, you know, they have a Drums coming up too. You see um, Stinger queuing up the Drums. You see Schofield queuing up that Force Staff. And that's where the Beast Coast side is going to need to be really smart with how they use their disengages for the Tiny. Tiny's going to have to blink in. Maybe they're going to pop someone. Then they're going to have to force him out. They're going to have to use some drums. They're going to have to get him out of there. Then he's going to reset and do it again. So, um, yeah. But that said, they're making another move. They're not going to slow the temple down, even though the Tiny died. They have the blink. They're looking bottom. Then they're going to continue towards the tri camp. But Nouns are doing a good job avoiding all of these, uh, all these ganks. That said, I mean, there's the Dark Mago sniffed something out bottom. He's he's a little curious. He knows. About this. They saw so. him. They just uh, don't. Yeah, smoke pops. Gunner gets out Gunner's again. Out. That's that's my boy right there. Look at this man. Zero deaths on Storm Spirit, despite how hard they're fishing uh, for. Yeah, him. I mean, his this net is worth is, his net worth is not pretty, but he's doing a great job at actually avoiding these deaths. Um, yeah. They're really trying, and, and and that's actually space for uh, Yamson here. I think. Gunner is doing a pretty amazing job at, at making space this game, especially yeah. for the, uh, the Lina here. The Lina has not had to do anything in this game. She's been flash farming basically the whole time. Um, she's not top of the network, but she's pretty close and working on that BKB. So hopefully they can get a fast BKB on Lina and make a move. Because I think it's really important that Lina starts to involve herself in this game. Um, she's level 11, strongest hero on the Dire team by far. And so I really think they need to get her involved in a fight. We can do an item check here for the side. Well, oh, there's going to be the toss back mid. They get onto the Timber Saw, but he's managed to keep himself pretty healthier thanks to the Hood of Defiance. And Dark Mago is going to be the one that falls instead. And Moo just Timber Chains on out. Okay. So he's fine. Uh, I was going to say that we can do an item check. Aghanim Scepter done on the Nature's Prophet. And Parker just finished up his Desolator. So he's got the Dragonlance Deso now done on the TA. Yeah. I think if the TA was there for that kill, the Timber Saw would die. But luckily, yeah. it was just the magic damage coming in, and they do not have enough magic damage to burst through this Timber. He has a hood. He has 1,800 HP. He's not going to die to this tiny concussive. And you see the same thing, right? The tiny commits. Then he's trapped by the cogs, um, and he can't get out. And he's stuck there. He's just going to die to the Timber damage. Um, they yep. really need to be able to actually burst the hero they jump. And that's two times now that they failed to jump, uh, failed to burst the Timber, failed to burst the clock. But... Husky, though, may be able to get bursted here. Oh, they're going to try and turn around onto Stinger. They get an exchange, so it ends up not being too bad. And Moo continuing the chase. Coming out. Yeah, onto nice. Tiny once again. A nice root in from the NP, but he's got the cogs to push him back. The Laguna Blade 
to finish off the tiny. Three deaths back to back now for Dark Mago. His entire momentum has just been halted. Yeah, they gave him so much at the beginning of this game as well. Like, they brought two supports in to chase the Storm Spirit out of the lane, completely shut down Gunner. Then they find three kills in a row on this tiny. His net worth is sitting at the exact same the score. He has more than well, double him before. So uh, uh, well, move. He lives. He's going to live. And with the Timbersaw here, Sacred's got to be very careful. Does have a TP available, and he does not want to risk it. It's a lot to chase him down. Yeah. Uh, almost a pretty amazing solo kill there by Sacred. He was, you know, blocking him in with the trees. He had three trees, like, blocking him into that little corner there. Pretty yeah. impressive. Nice so. find. Uh, other side of the map, uh, I mean, the Parker threat, he has not really participated in this game yet. Uh, he's almost got the blink taker. Once this one's done, like, you need your Lotus Orb done on the Timber Saw, I feel. Because if you get caught out by this Templar Assassin and hit with an Ancient Seal, like, you're dead. That's that. <laughs> I think it's on top of you with those two things. Yeah, the saving grace for Beast Coast is that this TA hasn't actually participated in the game either. So, really gonna look to get this guy involved. They're probably gonna try to get blink and then make a smoke around Roche. Yeah, I'd say that's there. your Roche timing, right? Because you can just blink on over, get the triple meld strike, and go from there. <laughs> yeah. They looked at jumping on move again there, but with Husky and Lelis both behind him, I'm not sure they find that kill. I think yeah. It would just been a repeat of what we saw a couple times before. He has his Lotus, actually. He just isn't disassembling. So he's not disassembling his Arcane Boots, but he could if he wanted. He'll, he'll probably do it during the fight. He wants to keep the Arcanes, like, until he, you know, runs out, basically, so he can just abuse the mana. Well, he's got the Perseverance on his Couriers, I think. Right? He needs to get the Perseverance oh. over. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah, he does. That's so he's totally actually weird. just holding on to it. Maybe he's just going to buy out the Energy Booster, but we'll see. Stinger just getting bursted by the Timber Saw there. A Hookshot comes through just to secure it, and another Wrath of Nature. That will kind of give them some idea of a ward nearby, so Husky sees that one. And Sacred's coming in with Schofield. There's going to be the toss back. They managed to get on top of the Clockwork in one quick Meld Strike. <laughs> That's enough damage. <laughs> Uh, now you see him, now you don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And wow. I mean, Beast Coaster is staying around here. Dark Mago is. He's got, a, he's got his little zombie on him, so. They know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they really to... want to push them away from this area. You've just got the Desolator completed on the Templar yeah. Assassin, and that means Roshan. Yeah. So... And Stinger now, be able to walk in, get the Steve Ward. He may be gonna die to the Lina though. Ooh, nice silence. He hits a BKBing right away, and he's ends up he's stuck in the sprout. Moo's gotta be able to chase these heroes down, slow them up, but a toss back right on top of the three you talked about with the damage from the TA. Almost managed to bring down the timber saw, but uh -huh. Yamson's out of everything. No BKB on the Lina. He's got no BKB with Vortex in! He gets jumped out, oh, though, the blink. blink just in time as those refractions were expiring. Dark Mago still the haste room, but it is going to expire now on the slow from the he flesh goal. He gets the blink, but the chase continues wow. from a nice hook shot. Lelis, he's got his mark, man. Two dead on the side of Beast Coast and big heroes at that. Can they go Roche yeah. with this? Uh, I think they'll start with mid tower for sure. Dude, look at these yeah. traps. <laughs> yeah, the traps are really annoying, actually. One annoying. more, one more. <laughs> They're not moving. Look at us. <laughs> All right. Uh, they're going to get the mid tower off of this, like you mentioned. Um, this is what they want. I mean, there's no way they take that Roche fight. They go into the Roche. <laughs> no, they, there's chain teepees in. I don't know if yeah, they're gonna... they are. They're not. Yamson lost his yeah. fiery soul stacks. Like, there's no way. And they're going to look for a husky going here. Dying here. Lotus. Going to protect him for a moment. The sprout will come through. And of course, oh, a Mystic Flare. So they do end up getting what they wanted at the end of the day. They get another ward out in the mid lane. So they have some more vision to play around. They're just going to go for Roche. This is so ballsy for Beast Coast. They know that Nouns have a ward. They know they have a ward on the high ground. They know they have a ward on the mid lane too. So they know about all the vision. But they're just going to go for it. They're super Hook ballsy. Up and they're going to get away with it. I mean, Lelis should go for the steal for sure. But man, what a ballsy play from Beast Coast here. Really impressive stuff by them. Not many teams would do that, I think. Yeah, yeah they just get it. Isn't gonna be to get it. I think Gunner too, just without big. being able to come in. That's a huge deal. So... Yeah, pretty interesting. I mean, they have BKB up. They have, they have, they have pretty much everything on now. I thought for sure they would try to fight there, get that tombstone down, but no go. And Aegis to Beast Coast, and a Grove Bow to Parker. So even better. Yeah, very good. Let's go. Feel sitting in trees here beside uh, Parker. Lelis, if he goes forward here, he is a very dead man. We saw how fast he went down last time. Yeah. He's almost got his four staff though. Things are gonna. Looks like he is Things gonna go will down. get better. 
things, things will, will get, get better, better you said. Like yes. So, and okay, they're now they're looking in. for sacred. Schofield does have a four staff, so they do yeah, have a way to disengage. But without the clockwork to actually catch these heroes, it ain't happening, man. Nah, this is just, just not wanting to give up the tier two, I think. Yeah, we see the in. And... He's actually kind of low on mana. Like he's got, yeah. I was like, he actually doesn't have mana for spells and for staff, but huge wrath of nature coming through again. Yeah, yeah. You can be so confident on Yamson when you know where Tiny is. You can see him in the mid lane clearing that one out. That's your only stun. So yeah. the rest of the hero is not able to blow up Alina, and she's sitting on the BKB, so she can just stand in front of everybody. That said, there is a Orchid on the Furion now, so there's another silence coming. There's a lot of silences now. Yeah. Um, I I'm curious. If I mean, Parker has the shard too. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought it was a great shard game for this TA. So another silent. I mean, they have lots of silences. They have the sky silence. They have the orchid. They have the TA traps. And these TA traps are, I think, Beast Coast's best tool to get in the game. I think the goal should be to poke their supports. They're going to try to silence the clock, silence the undying, silence the storm, poke their BKBs, poke their defensive spells, poke their lotuses. And then maybe then you can finally find a toss and actually kill someone. So. Really good smoke coming straight to the bottom lane. I mean, they saw Beast Coast starting to posture to push this, and uh, they lose the yeah, tower, but it's, it's, but it's just going to be popped Stinger. by Stinger. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. Stinger. Stinger is really happy to pop this smoke. I mean, this is like a dream for Enchantress. You get the tower, and you get five heroes. Um, really happy for um, the Enchantress there. And he feels good doing that. <laughs> yeah, she feels really happy right <laughs> <laughs> She's super happy to be dead. Don't be mad. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dude. I get what you mean, bro. Uh, Obviously, if uh, she's moving that many heroes down to the bottom lane, and you know she gets a tower anyways. Yeah, five enchantress for a tower and a full rotation. You'll, you're always happy with that stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. That'll get the TA to BKB too. See that mm -hmm. TA has it basically done. A bit good timing for them on Beast Coast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just about 50 gold away. Wow. Yeah, Parker, super farmed. Yamsun has a uh, four staff done now. He's probably gonna turn that into a dragon lance. Uh, or a Hurricane Pike, that's what I meant. Dragon Lights into a and, Pike. Uh, Moose got Assange. It looks like he's working on this Heaven's Halberd now, which he desperately needs against the Templar side. If you get a couple of these things against the TA, it just shuts down the game. Uh, if that's your only right click. The Furion does scale pretty well these days, though. It is actually, I, I take that back, not pretty well. It is insane how well this hero scales in the late yeah. game. Best late game hero in terms of scaling, right? By like a landslide. Yeah, His stats are best. so crazy. His stats, his abilities, everything about him. The Sprout talents are both really insane. The Leash and the Mischance yeah. is both like... This is a game where he might even just get the Mischance. Like, I was... He might just like Sprout the Lina and... Okay, like what are you gonna do? LSA yourself? Like, okay. Yeah, like, I was gonna yeah. ask you that earlier. I'm like... In, in, when it comes to games where it's like... You almost well, you probably take Sprout Leash like 99% of the time. But this would be one of those games where it would be kind Hold of on. funny for the Mischance and just... Well, Drop it the on only the issue with that is you do have like some evasion piercing with uh, Maelstrom, some true strike. That's true. And you're playing against the Storm Spirit. Yeah. So that leash is super clutch against the Storm. Wait, he can ball lightning out of it, can't he? No. No. What? I and mean, that's why he has a Quelling Blade. Oh, whoa. Oh, he no, he went four staff. staff. Yeah, he bought a four oh, staff. Yeah. Okay. He did have a quelling blade at some point. I don't know. He sold his sold his quelling to get a four. It's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, right? I'll get you out of the leash, Still and that's why we see the hurricane pike done so early on the Lena, right? Neither of them have to hold their quelling blades anymore. Yeah. Dark Mago still smoked up though. I wonder if he's gonna go for Husky here. He's no. It's such a deep dive. Yeah. He does have BKB completed, so it will be easier for him to maybe get out and get out something like that. That's it. If he BKBs though, he won't be able to get four staffs. So if he gets hooked, I mean, he's still dead. Yeah, dude. I will say, Nouns have done an incredible job at dodging out ganks. Like nine to eleven in this game right now, with how good of a start Beast Coast had, is pretty nuts. They're gonna get the jump here onto the timber saw. The Lotus Orb will come out to try and buy him space, but there it is. Dark Mago pops the BKB, trying to run away here, and he might be able to. But yeah, nice yeah, root, dude. Catching all of Nouns again. So. That's BKB down on Dark Mago. Yeah. yeah, they realize that uh, the wards are up there. The sentry ends up giving it away thanks to that. Rock to play, and they know, all right, these guys, these people are hiding on the tree here. I mean, and honestly, this is kind of where I think Nouns finally have advantage in this game. 
I look, it looks like it's kind of difficult for Beast Coast to execute. They don't have that much damage. Oh, they're going to oh, try again. On mid. They get the toss onto the Timbers saw on the backside of the fight. They get the silence off onto the clockwork. He's going to force Staff away, but Parker's still dumping in the damage. Soulburn, not there to finish him off. Lelis throws the hook shot, finally ends up dying, but Parker, he's got blood. Looking for more. Nice sprout, but a good timber chain timing there from Mu. Gets away. Yamson jumps Yamson? on forward. He's got the BKB. He's going to pop it immediately. They grab the Skyroth Mage, but now it's Parker versus Yamson, and they are way too afraid of this TA. Jumps on down to the low ground. He's underneath the tower. He's got a BKB to play with, but will he even get a chance to have to use it? There it is. To dodge the Vortex, Dark Mayo comes in, gets the Avalanche, gets the toss back. They've got the star in the oh, silence the there. Storm. He's gone. Buyback's coming through from both supports of the side of Nouns. They find Sacred, but can they actually get on top of him? Lelis forced after the high ground with the LSA. They do manage to finish him off. Four dead for the side of Beast Coast as a TP out from Parker. Overall, a, honestly, it's a being a pretty good fight for Nouns, considering. Yeah, you had to use two buybacks there, but uh, considering how far they chased them there, that BKB at first looked questionable by Yamson, but it actually ended up being a pretty good move taking out the Skyrath Mage there. It made it a lot easier for a Storm Spirit to zip in and out, and they had to dive pretty far to get that Storm Spirit at that point. High ground miss might be enough to save us. Yeah, high ground miss is it did save him. For Husky it there. dodged yeah. the Melt Strike. He was 100% dead. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, zoom in, man. All right, so for the first time this game, uh, I believe Noun's ahead on net worth after that. He's getting a little bit of control over the map after they take that team fight, so things looking better. I'm not sure this favors them into the late game, though. I'm going to be honest. This Templar Assassin and Nature's Proffer is going to be pretty scary. Well, Gunner's going utility. He's queued up in a Scythe of Ice. We'll probably see an Aghanim Scepter later. He is just here to pick off these cores. Like, that's all he's going to do. So, yeah, he'll have to play a little bit more kind of uh he has to play like a little bit safer in the earliest parts of the fight but if he sees his target and can get the hex off we can see some work come out from the storm spirit yeah definitely i mean honestly I, it looks like it looks to me like this timber saw is going to carry the game to be completely honest it looks like they're going to have a really hard time killing him the mm -hmm. ta at some point is going to run out of damage for his timber saw timber already has a halberd i mean he's look at the axe. timber's items yeah, he's oh, gonna go axe no, next, right? Oh no, Dark Mago kidnaps Lelis. He is... Oh no. Oh, the mech? Hot the mech and him. the heals? Nah, he's the still... rescue dog? He's still super dead. But, oh, I mean, yeah. it was, uh... Now Husky in trouble, though, and this is really bad for Nouns. If they lose both supports here, they'll have no map control for 70 seconds. Yeah, as it'll be Who's a dieback on both of them in. as they get on the back side. Dark Mago with the toss back, throws him on over to Schofield, and that's it. You lost the Undying, you lost the Clockwork. Moo has to get aggressive here, but he's all alone. He has to back out. Yeah. Ooh, that is rough. You lose the top tier two, you're gonna lose the outpost, and you have no supports on the map for, like you said, almost 70 seconds, but... Yep. Yeah. This is where the Tiny is gonna look to go ham, because there's no four staffs, there's no saves, there's no mech, there's no tomb, so if they can find one of these cores out of position, it's a great opportunity for them to make a play. That said, Moo is probably not the core they want. They're probably looking for the Storm of the Lean. Oh, whoa, he bought an Eternal Shroud. Yeah, he did. I mean, I don't know. Now he has a heart queued up. I mean, I'm not sure about that, but... Um, Over Aghanim so Scepter? Because, like, I feel like it's... Ags is, like, the massive damage boost on this hero, but he doesn't have a yeah, Kaya auto. Uh, I auto, forgot Kaya to listen item. to Moo talk uh, about how, oh, in the old days, we had Bloodstone. We didn't run out of mana on Timbersaw. He's probably just looking to go back to the old days. So he buys an yeah. Eternal Shroud. I mean... It is an interesting build. It's a good I item, but... Uh, like heroes that really benefit from Eternal Shroud are people like Pudge because you can just press Rot and give yourself 400 mana instantly. Whereas like you can't really do that on the Timber Saw. You have to soak damage somehow. Yeah. So it's a little bit different in terms of like getting that mana back, right? Less just presses R next to some creeps. Well, uh, I but... mean, the other feature is that the spell life deal that it gives you. He is on top of these heroes. Oh, no, I'm saying it's a great item. It's just that it's one of the reasons we don't really see Eternal Shroud all that often because the mana regen portion of it is just not as good as some of the other ones. Yeah. Uh, we haven't talked enough about Gunner's build, I feel. Uh, he's not going the BKB against the Skywrath Mage. Instead, he's just gone Force Death, Kaya Sanj, and now he's going for Sheep Stick. Yeah. Is this... That's what I was talking about is earlier. Is too wild? He's going all utility. Oh... Uh... I think it's okay. I mean, he's just going to play for buyback. I mean, this is kind of Gunner Classic. He's going to play to have buyback in every fight, to zip in from long range, clean up. He's going to play to kind of bait spells on himself. I mean, his goal is to just get gone on and let the Lina and the Timber carry the fight. Oh, man. And now, I mean, what the Rose spawn. 
perfect time and Schofield knows Gunner's gonna go in, try and punish him for it, but the Please rune is there. He's gotta be very careful. And a nice glimmer cape's gonna give him some space. The science comes in. Parker Yoink the ages! He gets Parker. it from right under their nose. BKB available from Yanta to use the hurricane pipe, trying to take down Dark Mago, but oh, wow. he's in trouble. Surrounded Laguna Blade onto the TA. They get the kill, but he's all by himself inside the pit. Lela is coming in as well. Moo, can they do it? Parker's got a blink. He even takes the shard. A disaster for Nouns. They've lost three and potentially a fourth as Mu is here all alone. Oh, Does pick up the kill there onto the NP. He's got a Timber Chain away into the TP. No Avalanche. He's out. Oh I'm my gonna... goodness, Parker. A single-handedly save that fight for him. If he goes down, wow. he doesn't get back up. They lose that fight easily, but... Man's out clicks them on ping. Were they even stunned for that or was he just fast? No, he just BKB'd I think, in. I think, I think Yamsen made a really big misplay, like not being on top of the Roche there. Like the T like the Lena was really far away from the Roche, and so the TA gotta just blink on top and take it for free, basically. Oh. Which was very free. Yeah, not I don't think anyone was actually on top of the Roche. Yeah, there. no one was close. The, whoever wants the Aegis should be on top. It's probably the Lena. The Lena should just stand on top of something yeah. because the TA just blinks in, takes it for free. He's like, oh, it's it's here. Okay, like sure, I'll take it. And then uh Really good fight for Beast Coast. Well, as soon as you get that Aegis, the Lina has to immediately be KB. Not going to be able to sustain through the fight. And um, yeah, good fight. And funny enough, at the end there too, I'm pretty sure the Furion was going to live, but he sprouts himself and then the Timber Q. Yeah. <laughs> Press Q, yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> absolutely yeah, annihilated him. Really funny. So, yeah. um, I'm curious what you guys think about the shard and who takes it. Right now it's sitting on the Enchantress, but this has got to go to NP, right? The Curse of the Old Growth. I, does I the, does a shard work on zombies? I, uh, oh, shard? wait a minute. Shard. If it I works don't on think zombies, so. Aren't the zombies magic immune? I don't know. Maybe, yeah. But it works on all... It works on... I mean, maybe. It does I say, like, you can't friendly and neutral and enemy. The thing. I mean, you yeah, can't... I mean... I Dude, and for science, immune. do it, please. So, yeah, for science. They gave, it, uh, the lobby. They, they gave it to Dark Mago just to give him the yeah. unlimited tree tosses. He is starting I, to I like build that. up into the core build, right? Where you get the Chrysalis and then eventually an Aghanim Scepter. Yeah. I will say Stinger also has no ult in this game. I'm not sure if that's normal. I feel like, I feel like one point in your ult is pretty... Oh, toss back. Oh, mid -line, mid -line. They managed to grab the Timber Saw. He just gets blown apart here. Wow, He's got to pop gonna, the Eternal Shroud of the Halberd. Not in time. He's gone Ooh. to the Soul Burn. Now they're going to chase. I mean, with no Timber Saw, there's going to be a real problem. Glypnir out from Yamsa. And LSA does catch Parker here on the TA. The hook shot can't come through. He was blocked off. And it will end up connecting Ooh, onto the Skyrath Mage. Nicely done, Stinger. No one will trade. <laughs> Nicely done. Oh, but the wrath of nature finishes off the clockwork. Yamsun versus Parker. Who is stronger, the Lena or the TA? Now, For now, Yamsun up. might regret having gone this far. Gunner's going to make his appearance known. He's got the hex, but they don't see him yet. In comes Yamsun, though, in some trouble. The BKB out from from Sacred, and there it is. He gets the kill. Backs up the fight. Gunner will pick up the TA. Oh, but they do get Parker. So ends up being a decent exchange. Great four staff out up onto the high ground. Gunner somehow salvaging the fight there. <laughs> it still does go in the favor of Beast Coast there, but uh, that looked pretty rough. Without Mu, these fights are so difficult. Like, yeah. It takes them a long time to get through them, but if you catch up Mu by himself with none of the team around, uh, I mean, Beast Coast shows how easy it is, so. I'm gonna be honest, I feel like this heart pickup by Mu is a little suspect. I mean, we saw it there. He purges off the first silence, and then there's like five more silences that like rain down on him. Yep. I feel like this would have been a great game to buy a BKB and just tank. Like, this Reaver, like, he would have had BKB right there. He would have uh, 4K gold, he would have a BKB, and they go on him, and he just presses BKB, and like, what are they gonna do? They're just gonna walk away. So or he kills like, them, right? If they're close yeah, enough. Or he yeah, you need BKB here to turn around for sure. D top so. rune. Gunner goes in, gets the hex off onto the tiny. Here comes the spell layers. Can they actually get the kill? Hookshot comes through as well, but tiny. They can't find him. It's going to be a, a, a something simple as a glimmer cape to slow it down. They managed to get the turnaround, but they will finish off the tiny. They finish off the NP as Sacred ends up showing his face in that fight. Silence out onto the Storm Ooh. Spirit is Moo. He's going to try and close the gap here, try and find Stinger. Another Hex coming out from the Storm Spirit. Or staff to safety. Gunner not done. He's got that uh, Vortex. Can't find him. Another Glimmer Cape out from Schofield. But Moo oh, is going to continue now. chasing. Moo? Nah, he's, he's got Gunner a Lotus. Realizes that, yeah, this Gunner's is like later, man. This is dumb. <laughs> yeah. 
So Gunner was just like 10 mana short of being able to Vortex after he zipped in the first time. He never quite had enough mana after zipping to throw the Vortex oh, out. Oh, here is comes it, Parker. Is it I mean, there's a lot of silence. He's here. got a Lotus still. Yeah, it's uh, the halberd. Just... halberd. TP. It's so halberd much mana. Halberd, some cool he, all these spells cost so much mana. He's gonna pop the Eternal Shroud oh, now, no. but he's not taking spell damage. They go in, oh, the initiation for Gunner, the LSA to follow. Yamsun, can he finish him off? There's the Laguna, but there's gonna be the BKB instead. Parker on the run. Gunner trying to keep his refractions down, but the blink wow. comes off in time. Hookshot on the oh, backside is gonna on connect stinger. onto Stinger. They will pick up the supports. A really good bait from Nouns, but they don't get the prize. <laughs> they don't get the TA. Oh, my heart. <laughs> Man, this game is really crazy. Yeah, happy you hopped in on that. I mean, you said this would be a good series. You're like, I, I showed you which ones we had. You're like, yeah, I want this one. Nouns versus Beast Coast. That one's going to be hype. Dude, look Parker's... at all of the traps here from Husky. Man, just, Parker is, is like... Ooh, Ghost right, Scepter. Ghost yeah. Ooh, very careful. Yeah, oh, we know right now. We have to really be a little useful. bit careful. Yeah. Gunner already full mana again. We'll see if he decides to go for more. I like that he's going back for the BKB now. I wasn't sure oh, if he's he would... on the Fury and he sees him. Oh, he does. Sacred in so much trouble. There's going to be the Vortex to follow it up. He's got that shard. Dude, the overload damage was more than enough. The hook shot just off the mark from Lelis. Dark Mago will make it out. Yeah, the root from the Gleipnir actually ended up... Uh... I think Intercepting. Didn't see it there. Yeah, yeah. Dude, Gunner's somehow almost level 25. He's like halfway to 25 now. The man brought it back. I mean, he's only taken one death this game, despite everything they did to shut him down with hero picks, with map movements. The man showed up to win today. Dude. He goes, number one SA DPC. Let me show you what number three in NA is capable of. Okay? Well, Parker on top lane. They're going for a big play here on Beast Coast. There's no Fury on two, so whatever this is, is going to be... He just picked up 25 on Lina. So that's this the pure damage. Uh, they've caught Stinger in the jungle, trying to get the D ward, punished immediately by the Storm Spirit. Who will grab him? All right, they got it. Well, now, uh, Skyrath maybe. Samson's far from home. He's got but friends coming, though. He's going to BKB. The question is, does he get a kill here in return? I mean, you're going to have to have someone do it, but there's no gunner. Without that, without the hex, it's not easy. Yep. Husky, I guess, just doesn't care. He's got four staff. He's got the oh. mech. Drops a sentry. Trying Hold to get on. out of here, but the chase Stonker continues. Parker. Whew. He's doing some work. Schofield's gone. Yeah, Schofield instantly gone. He's got he's got zombies Parker on him. Trouble? No yeah, blink. His refraction's breaking. There's the hook he's shot. Done. It's through. Nice play from Mago with a nice two hero stun, but in comes Gunner. Hits the hex onto the backside, but he's got to be careful. Can they finish off Parker? They do. And now he's Sacred, well. you don't have the damage against the Lena here. Pushed back by the cogs. They look for more as Dark Mago. Going to get chopped down here in just a matter of time. They've done it, man. A double kill for Gunner on the storm. And they get all three cores. Yep. I would say the game is completely wide open now for nouns. I mean, it looks like they're gonna even just hit high ground here. I don't, I don't really see how Beast Coast can take a fight like that's so sporadic like this. They really need to start with this tiny. They need the tiny to toss back someone. They need to take a one shot on their supports. They need to kill the zombie, kill a clock in a clean fashion. And you know, it's just not starting like that. They're starting on the Lena. They're starting on the Timber Saw, and these heroes aren't gonna die. And even when they go on the clock, I mean, he has a Ghost Scepter. They have to actually be able to stun him and. Dark Mago, you know, he goes down in one fight, then the supports die, then he respawns, and the supports are still dead. Just very sporadic gameplay from Beast Coast. I'm just watching Moo out re Like, they threw, like, a uh, concussive arcane bolt and some other stuff at Timber, and he just out regen the damage instantly, and they're like, all right, yeah, let's not do that anymore. Let's not waste our mana. Yeah, but there you go. The flicker on Storm Spirit that you made pick off. The perfect item yeah, for this game. Yeah, it actually is pretty, pretty nuts how good this flicker is. Plus, the Yules now has, I think, a Shiva's? Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty. I mean, needs the armor, of course, but I don't know what else this Mystic Flare or this Mystic Staff was before. So, quick Roche respawn as well. We didn't point that out. It was just ex it was exactly one minute Roche respawn. So, he's got a Wind Waker. Oh, I forget that item exists. That's yeah, pretty. This cool. item is super sick. Combine I mean, that with Flicker Force, dude. You're never catching Storm. He doesn't need a BKB. Yeah. And it's got an Ags on the Roshan, so there you go. Give that back yeah, one over the Storm. The storm and there's a problem. Wait, hold on. The Storm Spirit's about to go to top net worth if he gets his Ag and Blessing. He After actually does go top start, net worth if he gets it, yeah. yeah. After this man start, he's going to go top net worth.
Gunner is my hero now. Dude, I don't know how he's nine, one and nine this game. Like that actually doesn't seem possible based on that start. Timeless Relic drop here for the side of Beast Coast, but yeah, there it is. Aegis is on the deck. Gunner, just gonna yoink that Ags, and there it is. Top yeah, net worth Storm network. Spirit. <laughs> Just like that. Oh, top lane, in comes the Hex from Gunner. They were waiting for Dark Mega, the Vortex to follow it up, but does Lous make it in time? He does not. The BKB coming through, there's the hook shot right on the money. As Yam Sen will clean up the kill and Dark Mega sidelined for 90. Mighty, this is Arcane Rune on Lelis, so that, that hook is just right back up and he's almost got his Ags. Yeah, just chase him across the map there, nothing he's able to do. I mean, they realize they can't fight into them, especially not without the Tiny, so. They split push right now. Yeah, not Parker, far enough forward to get caught out though. Parker's working on his rapier, so I assume they'll try to wait for that. Try to get the rapier and then maybe make a play with that. I don't think they're gonna but let I mean, you play for the rapier. They're on tier is... fours, man. You got no <laughs> fortification. Going, so... It's on cooldown for three minutes. I think they might just end the game here. Gleipnir connects and oh, catches the Skyrath. This will be the force to have to buy some space, but the Hex has caught the Nature's Prophet instead. Gunner cleans him up, Parker. He's got an old fire. He's got some damage to work with, but there's gonna be the mech. Yamsun's just focusing the throne. He doesn't care. This is it, baby. Game one. Looks like it's just gonna be in the bag as Nouns close it out after what looked like a really good start here for Beast Coast. Well played. Just like that, Nouns yeah. managed to take down Easy. first place SADPC. Looking damn good today. What? I, I mean, I am most impressed with the comeback that Gunnar did from the mid lane. This game just looked completely over for him. You had to play into the silence. You had to play into a potential route. He builds a force tap. He's forced to build that on his Storm Spirit, but he wins anyways. I mean, Sammy, I mean, was this just good play at announce or mistakes from Beast Coast? Uh, I think a little bit of both. I think, I mean, right when Dark Mago got his Blink Dagger, right? They fail like three plays. They fail to play mid where he dies. Then they go bottom. Gunner, actually, it starts with Gunner breaking their smoke, right? He breaks their smoke. Then they fail a play, then they smoke again, then they fail their next play. So I think Beast Coast lost a lot of tempo in the early game, especially with such an early game focused draft. You know, they have Enchantress, they have Nature's Prophet, they have um, these Skyrath Mage, a really you know, intense laning hero. So I think for them, they kind of let the game get away with some not so solid moves, um, especially from the Tiny. And on the other side of things, I mean, I think Gunner played really well, definitely the MVP for Nouns that game, um, playing pretty exceptionally with a really bad start, especially with all the focus he got in the mid lane. Yeah. I mean, finishing 10-1 and 11, uh, while being like literally seventh on net worth at like six minutes into the game, seven minutes into the game is pretty nuts. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he was wasted, five, right? Yeah, he wasted <laughs> so long. like what was probably like seven minutes of Beast Coast mid game timing. Like realistically, like, like you said, he foiled the first three sm uh, smoke ganks completely. They didn't kill him. And then they turn around and killed Dark Mago three times in a row. Right, like, yeah. it, it completely shut down any mid-game momentum that Beast Coast had. Like, they were still farming on Sacred and, and Parker. Like, they were still super high uh, on net worth. But Gunner just making uh, some pretty nuts plays this game. And, and then, of course, going for that Scythe of Ice ended up being the nail in the coffin for Beast Coast. They had no way of, of playing around that. Yeah. Sick, sick game. Mm. Sick game number one, man. This was the series we were talking about for a while. We're like, this is going to be a fun one. And uh, game one, not disappointing in any regard but we're gonna go to a short break everyone we'll be back here with game number two of nouns versus beast coast again it's a best of three so we might hopefully hopefully we can see all three games neff maybe doesn't want to see that but we'll see it hopefully so <laughs> we're gonna go to a short break everyone. we'll see you in just a little bit